You know what Pastor Sonny said? I've never heard of anything like that in my life. The vision didn't even make sense to him. But he went back to his wife, Julie, in Los Angeles after separating. He said, Julie, the Lord spoke to me. She said, what did he say, son? He said, he wants us to open up a church for drug addicts and their families. And she says, what in the world is that? <laughs> it didn't make sense. But how many know if it's from God, it shouldn't make sense? How many know that he chose the foolish things of the world to confound the wise and the weak things of the world to throw down those? Can you give God praise that he chose someone like you, someone like me? He doesn't look for the qualified. He qualifies the call. He's not looking for sharp tools. You know what God's looking for? He's looking for tools he can sharpen. So when I think about ministry, I think about a ministry that started in the housing projects of East Los Angeles. They started to bring in different guys and girls off the street just to kick drugs and to hear the gospel. And today now, Victor Outreach has 700 churches in 33 countries. We are rehabilitating 10,000 men and women a week from drug addiction. I think we should give God a big praise for 53 years. That's what we've been involved in. But even as our ministry has evolved, I know there's some of us that came in here today and you, you said, I've never been to Victor Outreach. And you look around and you say, whoa, this is not what I expected. <laughs> but I'll tell you one thing, as our ministry has evolved and as our ministry has grown and matured, we've never lost the vision. Today, there's a new generation rising up in our church and many of our churches that their heart beats for hurting people. You, you begin to ask those young people who are dealing with depression and oppression, those young people who are comparing themselves on social media, those young men and women that are dealing with fatherless homes and coming from broken families, you ask them, once they give their life to God, what do they want to do? They want to go right back to that community, and they want to share the love of Jesus with those very same people. See, what I want to share with you today is that Victor Outreach has been working here for 36 years. I am the third pastor. I'm the best looking pastor it's ever had. I say that all the time. It's corny, but it gets a laugh. And we've been on the front lines working together with the mayor of San Diego, with the chief of police, with Captain Jerry Hara, with Dina DeSaro of San Diego One, with Lieutenant Servine, with all these different pastors, because we realize that we're not going anywhere. This is our city. And how many know if we're going to be here, we might as well make a difference while we're here. We might as well make a difference. You know, there's, there's a need for leadership and there's a need for partnership. Someone said, all that's necessary for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. For good men to do nothing. And so, before I call a testimony today, there are things that we can do to make a difference. What do our communities need? Number one, our communities need vision. The Bible says where there's no vision, the people perish. But do you know that where there's no people, the vision perishes? That you can have a vision, but there, if there's nobody willing to rise up to make a difference, how many know that vision will never go anywhere? And what do, what do the young people in our community need? They need vision. The second thing we need is we need, we need renewed passion. You know, some of the work that we're involved in, and I can say this because I've been doing this now for 25 years from Bridgeport, Connecticut, all the way to L.A. to San Diego, is that the type of work we're involved with will get you tired. It will wear you out working with families, working with hurting people. Sometimes you go home and you just fall on the bed. Can I hear an amen? When you're dealing with their everyday problems or everyday issues, when you're praying for them and you don't see change. And what I believe God is doing in this moment and in this hour is he's stirring a renewed passion in leaders. He's stirring a renewed passion, a second wind, so to speak. Can I hear an amen? And I'm going to tell you something about a second wind is that the anointing falls on a second wind. The Holy Ghost always falls on someone who's willing to try. 
The Holy Ghost always falls on someone that's willing to go the extra mile. What did Jesus say? He said, don't go one mile, go two miles. There's some of you here, you're working on your third mile. You're working on your fourth mile. But I came to tell you, God is going to stir you up. God's going to give you a fresh anointing. God is going to give you a fresh passion to make a difference. The third thing we need are values and principles for dynamic spiritual growth. We also need willingness to change and grow. I believe that our community will change when we change. How many know times are changing? The city's changing. The, uh, social, uh, the, you know, uh, socially, we're changing. Technology is creating so much change. And how many know we can't live in the past? How many know we can't do things the way we used to do them? Listen, pastors, brothers and sisters in the Lord, how many know sometimes as a church we operate from behind? I would say that sometimes we operate five years behind of what's happening in our communities. But I believe that there is a renewed passion and there's going to be a willingness to change. Someone once said, you know, God bless the flexible before they, because they never get bent out of shape. And I believe that this is a season right now where God is calling leaders to greater flexibility, greater flexibility. We've been praying for revival in our church. We've been seeing an outpouring of God's spirit. And one of our pastors was speaking the other day, and he said, when you're shaping a piece of metal, you've got to heat it up real good. You watch any of those shows on the Discovery Channel where they're heating up that metal to make a sword, and they heat that metal up so hot. And once that thing gets red and gets red hot, then they start banging it, and then they begin to shape it. You know, when the Holy Spirit is moving in your life and God starts shaping you, you won't even feel it. You won't even feel the changes that he's bringing to your life. You won't even feel that he's taking you to another level. You won't even sense that he's, but one day your eyes are open. You realize that God is with you. God is giving you a fresh power. God is giving you a fresh vision. And God is giving you a fresh passion. And that's my final thing. Depending on God for great things to be released through our lives and through our ministries. You know, when we have a challenge, and how many know serving God's all about challenges? It's the challenges that keep us alive. Do you know that? Do you know that when you have a challenge in your life, it's the challenge that keeps you alive? It's the challenge that gets your heart beating? It's the challenge that gets your blood, come on somebody. When you have a challenge, police know what I'm talking about, come on now, that Boom, 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 bam, 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 bam. There's a challenge and all your adrenaline stirs you up. Come on, because you've got to rise to the task. That's what we need. We need men and women who aren't afraid to rise up to the challenge. I want to call a testimony as I give over my time, and we're going to pray of a young man who was reached through the ministry of Victory Outreach. And every time I speak to him, not only is he a friend, but he's a history maker. And he was elected as the youngest and the first Latino city councilman in one of the toughest cities in the world, the city of Compton. Is Compton in the house? I want to give my time to, from the city of Compton, Councilman Isaac Galvan. Give him a good hand as he makes his way. doing what a powerful room I'm in right now if somebody took this room out right now nobody would be able to run the city right <laughs> I just really want to uh, thank my good friend uh, Pastor Al and his uh, wife uh, Sister Georgina for allowing me to come today um, even though I live and represent uh, the great city of Compton um, I consider this my church the victory outreach in the city of San Diego let's clap how louder for that right <laughs> Um, just to share a little bit about myself, um, I was raised in the Ministry of Victory Outreach. Uh, I was the son of a single mother with five children, uh, raised on welfare uh, our whole life. Um, uh, I was, uh, you know, I, I got into a lot of trouble at a very young age, uh, you know, anger issues. Um, I, uh, as a young boy, I went to 18 different high schools 
And that's only if you count juvenile hall as a high school too, because they make you go to class in there. And um, you know, I was just uh, trying to find my place to fit in. Uh, at a young age, got involved with uh, the wrong crowd and uh, did things that, you know, uh, you won't hear many council members admit and acknowledge that they did in the past, you know? But I'm glad that I serve a big God that forgive me for my sins and that is allowing me to use my testimony to help other people. And um, yeah, you know, I, I, I got my life together in the Ministry of Victory Outreach. I was able to uh, attend the Urban Training Center that Pastor Al and his wife uh, pioneered in the East Coast. And I was able to graduate over there, uh, get a diploma. And then I came back and, um, you know, uh, one thing that I learned in the Ministry of Victory Outreach and also in the Christian church in general is that we learn how to serve. Um, you know, we put God first, of course, but we're here to serve people. And that's where uh, my desire to get into politics started. Uh, I didn't go to college and study to uh, be a public servant. Um, I wasn't wealthy. I didn't have, uh, you know, hundreds or th hundreds of thousands of dollars to run a campaign. All I knew is that I was called to do something great. And um, while I was in the Urban Training Center, uh, uh, you know, a lot of people, uh, they're very spiritual, you know, especially when they're like in a, a group home and stuff. And I remember people would like pray that, uh, uh, you know, they wanted to be pastors or they wanted to be evangelists. And that's all good. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. But my prayer when I was in the UTC was that I wanted to reach the people that nobody else could reach. And uh, uh, when I sit back and think about that, um, I see how God put me in a unique position, um, not only being the youngest council member ever elected and the first Hispanic, um, but through my platform and my position, I've been able to build and establish uh, strong relationships with many people of uh, stature and celebrity. Um, I see Carlos right here and, uh, you know, I do a lot of stuff with Oscar De La Hoya, one of my good friends. Um, do a lot of things with our Compton natives, Anthony Anderson, Kendrick Lamar, YG, Dr. Dre. And, you know, um, we do things to help people. We collaborate on a lot of projects together. Uh, we do an annual uh, turkey giveaway. We give about 20,000 turkeys every year. Our NBA All-Star, DeMar DeRozan, is my partner on that. Um, we do a Christmas toy giveaway every year, about 10,000 people. This year, as my guest, I had San Diego's uh, very own Ryan Garcia. As I'm sure Carlos knows him. He has a big fight coming up on Valentine's Day at the Honda Center. He was my guest. Um, I've uh, raised $10 million with Dr. Dre to build a brand new auditorium for our kids. Um, we've got $80,000 from Kendrick Lamar to do after school programs for our kids. And, uh, you know, this is all stuff that was, is all because of God. Like, there's nothing special. You know, I have colleagues on the council as well and in many other cities as well, and they don't have these kind of relationships. It's nothing special about me. I'm not like, you know, the best looking guy like Pastor Al, you know. Uh, <laughs> I'm, just a <laughs> I'm just a guy that wants to serve and wants to work uh, and make a difference in my community. And I think that's why this task force is so important because um, you're building partnerships and that's what it's all about. Uh, as politicians, you know, uh, it's easy for us to give money to different organizations and law enforcement and fire and that's all important and good. But to really make a change in the community, you have to work together and God has to be at the center of it. Because, you know, jails are not going to change somebody's lives. Rehabs are not going to change somebody's lives. Putting somebody on medication is not going to change their life. The only thing that can change their life is God. And it's just a real honor and a blessing to be here today. And I want to thank you guys for having me. And, uh, you know, I want to partner in my city. Anything I can do to help you guys or anything I can do with any of my friends to bring awareness to any of the great work that you guys are doing out here, I'm more than welcome. I'm more than willing to do so. And I just want to say one last thing before I sit down because I know everybody's really busy and I know you get scared a politician has the mic and I want to give it up. <laughs> but, um, you know, this, uh, this past Tuesday, um, with the help of Pastor Al and his wife, um, we were able to uh, uh, organize uh, uh, events at the LA City Hall the, uh, with the LA City Council, um, Council President Herb Wesson. And you know, LA is the, one of the biggest cities in the state of California, one of the biggest budgets as well, and also one of the cities with the most challenges. 
and uh, the council president uh, put together a resolution honoring the founder of Victory Outreach, Pastor Sonny Argonzoni. And it was such a beautiful event. Uh, the entire council was there. The, in LA, they have 15 council members. And uh, you know, uh, uh, when I first became a council member, I didn't really like to talk about uh, the life that I came from and the things that I got involved in at a young age because you know, as politicians, sometimes your political adversaries will use that against you. So I never really talked about it, and I was always shy, but now, you know, I don't really care, so. <laughs> I got reelected, so I'm happy, and I'm not, well, I'm not embarrassed or ashamed, you know, to share it. But what was so, what was so, um, what, what, I, what I really noticed and what really touched my heart at that ceremony is um, the council members, after uh, Pastor Sonny gave his speech, and accepted his award for his uh, life and legacy, the council members uh, were not hesitant to share how they had brothers and siblings who were addicted to drugs, who were alcoholics, who were gang members, and they got saved through the Ministry of Victory Outreach. And it just goes to show the impact that this great ministry has world, world, worldwide. And it's just a blessing to be a part of it. And um, I just wanted to share that because I think it's important for us to, uh, uh, you know, continue to reach the people and not give up on people. And that's one thing I really want to stress. Like, you know, there may be some kids in the church and stuff that may not listen and stuff. Don't give up on them. Continue to love them. Continue to pray for them. Your relatives that aren't saved, continue to stand in the gap for them because someday you never know. They may also become a council member and have your back and stuff. But more importantly, I hope they develop a relationship with God and get saved. So thank you all and God bless you all. Can we stand and pray? This is our story. But each and every one of us is writing a story in our community. Our heart is to work together. Look at your neighbor, tell them, let's work together. Look at your second favorite, tell them we're stronger together. <laughs> when we hear from Miles in a few moments, we're gonna be hearing how we can do that, but I want us to pray. Father, we thank you for everything you're doing in this room today. Father, you're stirring the hearts of leaders law enforcement, city officials, business owners. God, you're inspiring people, God, to make a difference. Lord, our life matters. You created us for a purpose. And we've only been given a, a window of opportunity to make that difference. I pray, God, that you would teach us the brevity of our days and show us, Father God, how we could position our lives to make a greater impact. Also, God, pour out your spirit we lift up our police officers. We lift up our law enforcement agents, God. We pray protection over them. Protection over them. Protect their life. Protect them in a way that a bulletproof vest can't protect them. Set angels around them, God. Protect their hearts. Protect their minds, oh God. We lift them up to you. And we place them in your hands, God. Use them to bring peace to our city. And we pray for all the pastors and leaders today. And we pray that before this day is over, God, you would do something mighty in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said? Amen. Amen. You could be seated this morning. We're going to do a few more things, and then we're going to go ahead and let you go this morning. Once again, thank you for your time for coming out this morning i want to call up two two men of god two gentlemen for an event that is coming up here really really soon if you could help me welcome eddie duenas and albert mendeville